In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a radio control transmitter and receiver with an Arduino. I'm going to demonstrate it using LEDs, but you may be interested in it in the context of building a radio control vehicle, so we'll talk about controlling motors later in the video. Let's start out by talking about the transmitter and the receiver without the Arduino. The transmitter or controller has many different inputs, like joysticks and buttons, and each one of those corresponds to a channel or an output on the receiver that is going to generate an electrical signal depending on the position or status of the input on the controller. You can use your Arduino to read that electrical signal from the receiver and then do something with that information like control a motor or light up some LEDs. To talk a little bit more about what exactly this signal is, we are going to use a tool called an oscilloscope that lets us display a graph of the voltage coming out of these pins. So here I have an oscilloscope hooked up to the output of my receiver, and you don't really need to worry about what exactly an oscilloscope is or how to use one for purposes of this video. You just need to know that this graph is showing voltage versus time. So the y-axis of this graph is voltage, the x-axis is time, and I am measuring the voltage coming out of one of the pins on the receiver. So you can see that I have this sort of pulse or square wave shape to that voltage, and when I push one of the joysticks on the transmitter back and forth, the width of that pulse changes. So this is called a pulse width modulation signal, because I am modulating or changing the width of that pulse. And what we will see later with the Arduino is that there is a command called pulse in that will measure the width of a pulse for you. So you can use that command to measure the width of this pulse, which then corresponds to the position of the joystick. And you can then write some additional code to do something like control the speed of a motor using that information. What I didn't show there, so I'm going to zoom in closer here so you can see it up close, is the connections on the receiver itself. So this receiver has eight channels. Each one of those channels has three pins. To figure out what those pins are, you are going to need the manual for your receiver. So you can see here, if we look at the manual, that each channel has three pins, one for ground, one for power, and one for the signal. So before you connect wires to your Arduino or an oscilloscope, make sure you check the manual for your receiver. In this case, I have the blue wire here, so counting from right to left is ground, the red wire in the middle is power, and then the green wire on the left is signal, but that might not be the same for all receivers, so make sure you check the manual for your receiver. In this case, I am not actually running any code on the Arduino. I am just using the ground and five volts from the Arduino to power the receiver and measuring the output directly on the oscilloscope. Now, interestingly, a bit of a side note here, if all you need to do is control a servo motor, then you can do that directly using the output from the receiver without running any code on the Arduino. Again, all the Arduino is doing here is providing power for the servo and the receiver, but it's not running any code. The output of the receiver is connected directly to the signal pin on the servo. And that is because that pulse width modulation signal that we saw coming out of the receiver on the oscilloscope is intentionally tuned to be the same signal that these servo motors accept for control. This allows you to build devices like RC cars, RC airplanes that use servo motors for steering, and then they can run directly using the signal from the receiver without needing a microcontroller running any code. So if you do just want to use servo motors, again, you don't actually need the Arduino, even though I'm using it for power here, but we are going to show you more generally how to get the signal from the receiver into the Arduino, and then that lets you use code to use it con to control more things, again, like LEDs or the speed of a DC motor, for example, if you wanted to build a steerable robot, which we'll talk about more later in the video. So first, without controlling any hardware, we're just going to show the code for getting the signal from the receiver into the Arduino. Again, you need to double check your manual for the pinout, but I have power, ground, and then my signal pin. So I'm just going to feed my signal from the receiver directly into one of my Arduino pins. I have chosen pin two, and then we will switch over to the computer and look at the code we need 
to get that pulse width from the signal pin. If we look at the code just to measure the value from the receiver, we'll see that this is pretty simple. First, I just need to declare two variables, one for the receiver pin and one for the pulse duration. Note that I am using the variable type unsigned long there instead of int, because this can be a pretty big number since it's measured in microseconds, which we'll discuss later. Then in my setup function, I am just using the pin mode command to set the receiver pin as an input and initializing serial communication so I can print the value out to the serial monitor. Finally, in my loop function, I am using that pulse in command that I mentioned earlier to measure the duration of a high pulse on my receiver pin. That is going to return that pulse duration in microseconds, not milliseconds. If you're used to working with Arduino and things like the delay command, you might default to milliseconds, but it's important to remember that this is returned in microseconds. And then finally, I am just going to print out the pulse duration to the serial monitor. So if I go ahead and upload this and then open my serial monitor, we can see what this is doing. Where here, if I am not touching the joystick at all, so the joystick is centered, I am getting a pulse duration of about 1400 or 1500 microseconds. But you can see as I push the joystick, this value is going to change. So if I pull the joystick back towards me, that pulse duration goes up until almost 2000, a little over 1980-ish. And if I push it forward, that value is going to go down to just under 1000, about 990. So I can move the joystick back and forth and change this number. And now that I have this number as a variable in my Arduino code, I can use it to do whatever I want, like controlling multiple LEDs like you saw earlier, or controlling the speed of a motor. Let's say, for example, that I wanted to use the joystick to control the brightness of an LED. So you can see here, it might be a little hard to see the changes on camera, but when I pull the joystick all the way down towards me, the LED goes to full brightness. When I push it up to the top, the LED turns off. And if I leave it in the neutral position, the brightness is somewhere in the middle. In the code, I have added a few variables, one for the LED pin, one for the PWM or pulse width modulation value for controlling the brightness of the LED with the analog write command that is different from the pulse width modulation signal coming in from the receiver. And then I've also stored roughly those minimum and maximum values I saw for the pulse width in variables. These aren't exact, but they're close enough for our purposes here. And you'll see why I wanted those when we look down in the loop function. That's because I am using the Arduino map command which you should have seen in some of our previous tutorials if you've checked out our other Arduino tutorial videos. If not, you can find those linked in the description of this one. This is a useful command that will map or change values from one range to another range. So for example, I know the analog write command, which you can use to control the brightness, LED, brightness of an LED or the speed of a motor, which again, you can find specific videos about this earlier in our Arduino tutorial series. This accepts a value between zero and 255, but as we saw, the values I'm getting from that pulse in command are between roughly 1000 and 2000. So I can't just send that value to analog write without first changing it or mapping it to zero to 255. So that's what I do with the Arduino map command here. And again, that's gonna let me use the joystick to control the brightness of this LED or if I had the circuit for a motor connected, which I'm not gonna show in this video, but again, we have another video showing how to do that. This would allow me to control the speed of a motor. The other nice thing about using the map command like this is it lets you reverse the behavior of the joystick in software. So again, right now I have this set up. So when I pull the joystick down, the LED goes to full brightness. And when I push it up, the LED goes off but you might want to reverse that. And all you have to do there is reverse the location of the min and max variables in your map command. And now you will see when I upload this, go to done uploading, the behavior is reversed. Now when I push the joystick up, the LED will be on all the way. And when I pull the joystick down, the LED will go off. I've also added a serial print command here to also print the PWM value. So you can see when the joystick is in the middle of its range, pretty close to 1500, the PWM value or analog write value is in the middle of its range right around 128. If I push the joystick forward all the way, that's gonna get up to close to its maximum of 255. Even though this number went down, again, I've used the map command to reverse that behavior. 
and when I pull the joystick down, the pulse duration is going to go up, but the analog write value for the brightness of the LED goes down, again, because I have reversed the behavior in the map function. Switching back over to the demonstration from the beginning of the video, you can see that here I am using two channels on the receiver, the left and right joysticks, and controlling two sets of LEDs. So when the joysticks are in their neutral position, the center LEDs are lit up, and then when I push the joystick in either direction, it lights up the corresponding LEDs. And this program is a little longer, so I'm not going to go through the code line by line, but you can see that I have essentially duplicated everything for both the left and right channels. So I'm printing out two variables to, variables to the serial monitor here. You can see when I push the left joystick, when I push this one forward, this pulse duration goes up. When I pull it down, this pulse duration goes down. And that is the opposite of the behavior I saw on the right joystick, where when I push this forward, the pulse duration goes down. And when I pull this down, this pulse duration goes up. But again, if you want to reverse the behavior of a joystick, you can just do that in your code using the map function. Although I have done things a little differently here, rather than using the map function, I have defined a bunch of threshold values, and then I am using if statements to check if the pulse duration is within a certain range, so greater or less than a certain threshold value, and then use that to decide which LEDs to turn on and off. So I could have used the map function here instead and just mapped to a very narrow range, for example, one to five, and then used if statements to determine which LEDs to turn on or off, but there's multiple ways you could do this to accomplish the same thing. Again, it depends on your project and what exactly you want to control. But again, I'm not gonna go through this line by line. I'll paste the code down in the description if you wanna check it out. But the idea here is that I have five LEDs connected to each joystick. I'm measuring the pulse duration from each joystick and then comparing that pulse duration to different threshold values to determine which LED to turn on. Now, here's something to consider. If you want to use the joystick to control a motor in a vehicle where you would want the motor to be off when the joystick is in the center position, spinning full speed forward when you push the joystick forward, and then spinning full speed back when you pull the joystick back. This, for example, is what you could do with our BlueBot project where you to add radio control. You can find a link to that project in the video description. You would need two variables there, one for the speed and one for the direction. So it's not just a single line of code with the map command to go from the pulse duration to a range of zero to 255 because you want the motor to be stopped when the joystick is in the middle. You don't wanna to have to pull the joystick back to stop the motor. You want to be able to spin the motor in forward, kind of represented by the forward two LEDs there, and in reverse, represented by the back two LEDs. So I'm not gonna give that away in this video, but if you watch our previous videos on controlling motors and using joysticks with the Arduino, you should be able to figure it out so see if you can figure that out. But again, it's going to depend on what exactly you want to do. You can use this radio control unit to control all sorts of things once you understand how to get that signal into your Arduino. Please check out the video description for a bunch of relevant links to our other Arduino tutorials and science projects. And for over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, not just Arduino, check out our website, www.sciencebuddies.com. Dot org.